What's up, survivalists? Malcolm here with Survival Know How, and today I'm gonna to talk about what you can do to prepare for a market correction, a recession, or maybe even a full on economic collapse. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I put out content all about survival, prepping, and self-reliance. So make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell icon to stay current on my latest content. Today, we're going to talk about what steps you guys can do right now to protect yourself in case we do enter into a economic crisis. Now, if you guys are curious whether or not I think we're going to enter into a major economic collapse, I've got an entire video talking about that right here. And you can also find a link to it at the end of this video. So the first thing you can do to protect yourself, it's not very glamorous, it's not very fun, but it's to reduce your monthly expenses. If you think that we're gonna have a shift in the market, then this is not the time to be increasing your monthly expenses. So I would not recommend you go buy that more expensive house right now if you can't afford that monthly bill. Don't be running up your credit cards right now. Don't be upgrading your internet to the faster package or getting more TV channels. Do whatever you can to reduce your monthly expenses and your monthly costs. This way, if you do lose your job down the road or gas prices goes up or the price of corn and wheat goes up, you know, you'll be protected. Your monthly expenses will be a little bit easier for you to maintain. Next, cash is king. Personally, I like having quite a bit of cash on hand at all times, right? And I like having it in small denominations. $100 bills aren't really gonna help you very much. If there ever is some kind of major economic collapse or there's a major shortage of fuel or some sort of natural disaster and small pockets of people are now isolated for a long period of time, you're not gonna be able to go to the bank and withdraw your cash. You're not gonna be able to use your ATM card or wire people money or write checks, right? You wanna have cash on hand. And personally, I like having small bills because it is just more functional than having an entire wad of hundreds. Next, I really recommend having some sort of side hustle. So what is a side hustle? A side hustle is something that you do after your main job, right? You do it on the weekends, you do it after work. YouTube, for me, is a side hustle. I make money by making these videos. If you have fears that your company may go bankrupt down the road, get a side hustle, start working now just to build a little bit bigger nest egg, and your side hustle may even turn into your full-time job one day. So next, let's talk about cryptocurrencies for a moment, including Bitcoin. So yes, I am a big believer in cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are absolutely going to infiltrate many, many daily uh, activities and occurrences in our lives. You are gonna hear the word blockchain and decentralization far more in the future. And if you're unfamiliar with cryptocurrencies, just on a broad sense, what's great about cryptocurrencies is that they are not controlled by any one government and they're not tied to the policies and the politics of any one government. It is essentially a global currency that is held by the people not the governments. What I particularly like about it is cryptocurrency is an uncorrelated asset. It is uncorrelated from the United States stock market, it's uncorrelated from the United States real estate market. I highly recommend that you look much deeper into cryptocurrencies. Now let's talk about gold and silver for a moment. I know there's a lot of YouTubers out there and a lot of preppers who say, buy gold, buy silver, get coins, buy bullions, buy bricks of gold and it's going to help you in case there's a major economic collapse that's going to become the new currency i'm not a believer i'm not convinced i don't think so i think if we had a major uh, let's say power outage for six months and you went to your next door neighbor and said hey man i'll buy that generator off you for this gold bullion i think he's going to look at you and laugh he's going to be i have no use for that right now and that's the truth guys most people don't know how to use gold as currency you gave somebody a gold nugget, they would have no idea how valuable that is. They would have no idea how to tell if it's even real or not, right? Is one gold bullion worth, worth one chicken? Or is it worth 10 chickens? Is it worth a cow? Most people have no idea how much gold and silver is worth. And frankly, the only scenarios that I think that would actually be applicable is if in the entire government shut down and we had just total chaos and a lot of people died. Now, if a lot of people die, that means there are tons of houses that you can go and ransack 
You can get gold and silver jewelry from these houses. So I, I, I don't think there's gonna be any shortage of gold and jewelry in this specific type of scenario. So no, I don't think that you should invest in gold and jewelry. Personally, in my opinion, I'd prefer to have cash on hand in small denominations. I'd prefer to have some cryptocurrencies that are completely uncorrelated from the United States stock market. And I'd for, prefer to have assets like guns and bullets and coffee and food and tools and water filtration systems. All these things I think would make a much better currency in a major catastrophe. Next up, if you do have money in the market and you wanna keep it in the market, diversify. I especially like index funds. So index funds are big collections of stocks. So instead of betting everything on one stock, with an index fund, you're betting everything on a market, a specific a group of stocks. And that way, if one of those companies ends up going bankrupt, the other ones can kind of help support your investment. And keep in mind, when you're investing in index funds, you don't have to invest just here in America. You can invest in the Asian markets, you can invest in the emerging markets, in the European market as well. So don't think about diversifying just by buying a bunch of different stocks and companies here in the US. Diversify globally, split your portfolio up amongst other countries and regions in the world as well. Next, I am a big fan of dividend funds, right? Dividend funds pay you back quarterly for holding their stocks. What I especially like about dividend funds is that when the market goes down, the amount that they pay you every quarter typically goes up. So as the market goes down every quarter, you're getting another check and typically you set it up so that check buys more of those stocks. So the next quarter, you get another check, you buy more stocks. It keeps going down, you get another check, you buy more stocks. So what's great about this is markets go down and they go back up. The average bear market of going down lasts 1.4 years. So bear markets don't last very long before they start going back up again. And if you wanna ride this wave all the way through, it typically it should only take you a few years to go from one peak down and back up. Stocks that pay dividends are the perfect way because by the time you get back up to the same valuation that you started off at, you've now accumulated many more stocks and you've bought those stocks at a severe discount because you've been buying the stocks the entire way down and the entire way up because of your dividends. So like I said, I am a big fan of dividend stocks really in any market but especially in a bear market where by the time the market goes back up, you're gonna have many more stocks than you originally started with. I also wanna say that I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. I am just a nerd and I find this stuff kinda of interesting. The last thing I wanna talk about guys is if the market truly is heading down, this may be one of the rarest and best opportunities of your entire life. And I sincerely mean that. In 2008, when the stock market plummeted, Warren Buffett went on TV and said that he is investing heavily, investing heavily in the stock markets, in companies, in stocks, and in index funds. He stuck everything he had in the market. Now, in 2008, at the bottom of the bear market, the S&P 500 was worth $750. 10 years later, it peaked at $3,000. It's time for the question of the day. What do you guys think makes the best store of value during an economic collapse? Should I be investing my money in gold and silver or in assets like coffee, cigarettes, and bullets? Or do you think small bills of US dollars will still have a lot of value three months, six months, nine months into a national blackout? I'm really curious to know what you guys think is the best store of value. Leave your answer down in the comment section below this video. And if you haven't checked out my video yet about if the United States is heading towards an economic collapse in 2019, make sure you click right over here to watch that and I'll see you guys over in that video.